Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. And this is going to be the final video in my $98 Decathlon Rock Rider ST100 video series. So this is the bike I bought at Walmart for $98. Unfortunately, they're no longer available for that price. But I did think it would be interesting to see what it was like buying such an inexpensive bike to see if it's actually any good. And this is going to be the video where I sort of talk about the things that I've changed about the bike and my impressions of it overall. So let's start out with all of the things that I have done to the bike. And this is going to be uh, as descriptive as I can without going uh, into too much detail and going too long because I can definitely just start yammering and rambling on. Anyway, so let's start with the uh, components that I put on the bike to make it more um, comfortable as far as my interface with the bike. So where do I, all my touch points. So that's going to be the saddle, the pedals, and the grips. So I'm going to start with the pedals since I'm already kind of pointed that way with the camera. I bought a, a nicer set of pedals that were actually really inexpensive on Amazon. I've bought these before and I've been very impressed with quality. I think I paid $13 at the time I bought these. I'll have to check and see where they are now. And I'll try to link to the uh, current product listing when I can. Uh, but these are a polycarbonate pedal with sealed cartridge bearings and chromoly steel axles. And this is what came off the bike. Just a very basic. This is what you typically see on this type of bike. Uh, plastic pedal, ball bearings. And they're actually not too bad as far as like how, how smooth the... The bearings feel i'm sure they would work fine my problem is because i have such large feet size 13 or size 14 i need a larger more supportive pedal which this provides better support and also better traction with these metal pins which uh, be careful something like that can definitely tear up your legs if you slip off of them but the idea is that you don't slip off of them because they're very much secure uh, another inexpensive upgrade I made to the bike was just a water bottle cage. I wish it had more than one cage mount, so this is what you get. But this is a very inexpensive plastic cage from Amazon. I think I paid around $3 for it. And the other Amazon item I got for the bike was a kickstand. So most of my bikes that I use for uh, street riding, typically I don't mind putting a kickstand on, but I don't like kickstands on my off-road bikes. So you'll see this bike is sitting on a kickstand and uh, I wanted to get one for this bike. The normal place where you mount a kickstand uh, right up there is not really going to work on this bike. There's just not enough room to fit one in there and you've got the cable running uh, to the derailleur that um, that kickstand would probably interfere with. So I bought one of these that mounts to the uh, chain stay, which this one is I think like an $8 kickstand off of Amazon. You do have an adjustment to adjust the overall length of the kickstand so you can uh, make it fit your bike. And this is designed to fit on kind of a uh, oval shaped uh, frame piece like that and has a little protective plastic insert so it doesn't damage your frame. This one fits very, very well on this bike. So uh, very happy with that purchase on this bike and definitely can't complain. Uh, let's see here. Let's move on to the seat and seat post. So the original seat on this actually wasn't too uncomfortable for me. I'm used to riding kind of narrower bike seats. Uh, some people don't like those. That's just a personal preference thing. What, what works for your anatomy and whatnot. But uh, what I ended up doing was robbing the seat off of this bike to put on another bike so I could sell it with a really cheap seat. And I put a nicer seat on this bike which then required me to change the seat post because if you watch my other video where I complain about the seat post, you can't adjust the, the angle of the saddle because this is a welded, uh, welded uh, clamp right there. And I happen to have this aluminum seat post in my parts bin. It's off of one of my older mountain bikes that I've since sold. And because it's a common size, 27.2 millimeters, fits right into the bike and works perfectly. So... That was kind of a free upgrade. The seat was actually a free upgrade because it came off of a bike that I bought and uh, took some parts off of and then resold and made a few bucks on it. So 
that's just how I do. I buy and sell bikes and get parts and things like that. So that was that was a nice upgrade. This is a Cell Royale uh, gel type saddle Lata. I haven't seen that one before, but looks like a nice seat. It says it's made in Italy, so that's fancy. And then the grips. Uh, so I mentioned I swapped out the grips. The original grips on this are a very thin, hard rubber grip. And so I wanted something with a little larger diameter and a little more cush. And so I've used these ESI grips. They're made out of silicone, uh, really good quality. And I just cut it down to make it work with the uh, partial grip on the grip shift. And those are great. Just a real basic, nice, soft, grippy silicone grip. But that's up to personal preference, what you like. You can... Uh, cut regular grips down or buy something that's made for grip shift type application. So that's what I've done there. And then the last thing to kind of make the bike more comfortable and fit better is I replaced the handlebar. So the original handlebar is very narrow. I think it would work okay for shorter folks, people of smaller stature that might be riding the smaller frame size bikes, but on this extra large, it just didn't work right. It was too narrow, didn't have enough rise. So I got this fairly inexpensive aluminum three inch riser bar and I know in millimeters it is like 700 millimeters wide. The stock handlebar is like 620. So 80 millimeters difference is a little over three inches. So that's pretty significant. And again, three inch rise as opposed to probably about a one inch rise bar on the original handlebar. So that, that brings the handlebar positioning up perfectly on this bike, makes it so much more comfortable. And then the last thing I... I just toss this on whenever I need to use it is this little uh, cell phone holder. Uh, your phone just straps in these little corner holders and actually holds it very, very securely. I, I uh, have a couple of these and move them around from uh, some of my other bikes. Most of my bikes have an actual dedicated um, quad lock brand mount, which my phone case locks into a little bit more securely, but this works great for sort of a temporary thing, working on different bikes that I may be riding around on. So um, that's as far as, uh, you know, all the accessories and add-ons I've done to the bike. Uh, I haven't really done anything else to it other than my initial setup on the bike, which uh, you're going to do to any bicycle when it comes out of the box. So you're going to check the, uh, the hubs, make sure the wheels are true, and make sure all your bearings are spinning smoothly, make sure there's grease in the headset. Uh, the one little issue I have had with this bike was the bottom bracket. The, uh, I'm come over, over here just so I can point at the problem area. So this little, um, this side of the bottom bracket is a cup that threads into the frame there. That just wasn't threaded in all the way and tight. So I had to remove the crank and uh, tighten that down, which... When you have the special tools to do it, no big deal. It's it's easy to do, but for the average person, that might require you bring it to a bike shop. And what I was noticing was I was just getting a little bit of kind of clunk and noise in the cranks. You could just feel it whenever you were pedaling. And I've had this happen on other bikes, more expensive bikes too. So I'm really not too uh, too upset about it. I don't uh, feel like it's a huge knock on the bike itself. It can happen to anything, but it's just one of those things that. You definitely want to make sure the bike is set up properly and ready to go before you really start riding it. So other than that, it's been it's been pretty good. Um, nice riding bike. I mentioned in my other video, I'm not a big fan of the fork. It does have a bit of slop and a bit of flex because it's uh, just a cheaper, lower performance fork. And that does translate somewhat into uh, a little bit less precise, more vague steering feel. It's not terrible, but... It's something I do notice, but for the type of riding, just casual riding around the neighborhood, hasn't let me down. I'm not going to complain about it too much, especially for what I paid for the bike. So definitely recommend one of these things if you can pick one up for cheap and it's in good shape. I wouldn't pay the full retail price, which is $348. I'm not sure I would pay even $248, which is what I've seen these on sale for. I did see the small size frame currently available on Walmart as of, what is today, the 29th of December, 2022. They had those on sale for 148. I think that's a pretty good price. I might go ahead and pick one up if I was after 
one of these bikes and that frame size worked for me, but I think they recommend that for someone five foot zero to five foot four or something like that. Um, definitely on the shorter end of things, but, um, great bike. Glad I got it. And, uh, it's, you know, definitely something to consider if you're, if, if you're out there and you find one for yourself. So again, thank you for, uh, watching all of these videos if you did, and I hope it's been informative for folks and useful and please like and subscribe if, if you feel like doing so. Thank you very much and uh, have a great day and a happy new year since we're about to roll into 2023. Take care.